Hey, welcome to the Board of Park Commissioners meeting for Tuesday, November 5th. Please call the roll. Mr. Cappers. Here. Mr. Emmerich. Mrs. Westfall. Here. Okay, we have our minutes of our prior meeting of October 1. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions of those minutes? Nope. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Motion accept or second it. Okay. Cappers have made the motion. Westfall seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? They are accepted. Reports. Mr. Drake, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Anything to add to your report? Uh, just to expand a little bit, I concluded the 2019 uh, special event cost summary in my report. I think mm -hmm. it was the last, probably the last page you received in my report. Um, just as we kind of wrapped up our uh, special event season, uh, we still have, of course, the Christmas tree lighting the day after Thanksgiving. But we had a total of uh, 29 work orders put in for special events. Most of those, I think with the exception of three uh, concerts at Treasure Island, most of those would have um, entailed working with or moving or setting up, opening, closing, uh, repositioning the showmobile through the summer. So. Um, you can see the average cost per move or per, per event was $328. That includes uh, labor and equipment costs. Uh, total cost in the season was right around $9,500. So as we talked earlier in the season about um, staging and you know a permanent stage potentially downtown at some point uh, in the future, um, I thought we'd just kind of recap uh, what we had to date for special event work orders and costs associated with those. Um, other than that, you see in the uh, total work orders, we had 114 for this last month. In the cost summary, you'll notice that 80 are reflected in the total uh, work request count. So uh, the balance of those would be reflected as I go back in and input the materials and hours. So that would mean that the work order was input, but uh, employees weren't yet assigned to those work orders. So um, as those were closed out and I went back in and, and uh, updated those, that would be reflected in that total um, toward the 114 total assignments for the month. I think that's all I have with my report. As to the amount spent for the uh, setup of the special mm -hmm. items downtown yep. on Prouty Plaza, uh, I think that's good information to keep and to generate then when interest gains popularity right. on putting one in. Yeah. So you show how much we're going to save by having sure. it there. We'll continue to do that for sure. And, th and that's just one example of many. Uh, basically for all the work orders we have listed, if we want to see specific numbers for those work orders, we can go in and pull that data out. So um, that was just a good example, you know, as a recap. But we could do that with any of the work orders we keep track of. Good. Great. Any questions of Mr. Drake? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Mr. Seiler. Good afternoon. Do you have anything to add to your report? I do not. There's any questions at all. Just, just uh, working on our upcoming kind of winter season with public skating, and uh, we're doing some last final projects before we have the dead of winter over at the uh, at the aquatic park before the weather really turns mm -hmm. on us. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Seiler? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Mr. Brewer. Good afternoon. When's the due date? <laughs> well, it was two days ago, so. <laughs> Still patiently waiting. <laughs> okay, do you have anything to add to your report? Um, no, nothing really to add other than, uh, you know, our guys are just uh, hard at work with uh, leaf pickup this time of year. Obviously, that's kind of our, our main focus uh, from a maintenance perspective, but other than that, nothing to add. And you made it through the full season without the fungus that we experienced last year? Yes, yeah, yeah that's I mean, great. You know, we're uh, definitely on the other side of that, and um, uh, now it looks actually, actually, conditions are very good out there. Okay, uh, I don't have any planning commission report uh, that affects us. Um, old business, concerning the approval of park assessment. What the hell's that? That is um, Salamis. the Salamis project for the commission. Oh, we're not talking tax. Today's election day. We're not talking a tax assessment. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we have received uh, the updated assessment. Jeremy, did you have any additional comments after you received I that? I didn't. I had uh, noted those. I think I'd sent an email with uh, just the comments and an update for things that were listed during um, 
the assessment mm -hmm. that you know that we've done since then. Mm -hmm. So I think that was included um, with the updated version that you have now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rather than approval, I'm going to suggest that we accept the assessment, and I'll make such a motion. I'll second that. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Salome, thank you for your work. Appreciate that. Okay, next item: uh, fees and lieu for the Parkland of Villages of Concord. Who has the report on that? Same procedure. Please. Yes, please. Shannon Brandon, zoning inspector with the City of Troy, 100 South Market Street, Troy. Uh, the City of Troy received an application to build out the existing subdivision called Villages of Concord, which is located off of Wayne Street, which is north of the Kroger Marketplace. Um, the developer is not proposing to um, have parkland and is requesting the park board to accept fees in lieu of parkland, which um, by doing so would result in $17,500 then going into the Park and Recreation Capital Budget. Uh, it is requested that the Board of uh, Park Commissioners recommend to the Planning Commission a positive recommendation to accept fees in lieu of parkland for the proposed subdivision of Villages of Concord. Even though the matter may have some problems at the Planning Commission level, the um, Board of Park Commissioners is only being asked to accept fees in lieu or real estate in lieu of... Correct. The fees in lieu, okay. Um, do you have any questions of staff? I'll make a motion to accept uh, fees and lieu for the parkland when and if it ever passes through the uh, balance of the city government. And I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. Next we have consider uh, approval and ordering of installation of proposed entrance sign at Miami Shores. Tyler, do you have a report on that? Yeah, so uh, that was included uh, in my report at the very back of that, and then I just um, gave you guys kind of an updated uh, look of, <clears throat> of what that sign would look like. A um, couple of different reasons to update the sign. You know, one is with us having now added uh, the shoreline as well as a driving range. Uh, felt it would be uh, necessary to kind of uh, create a new sign to kind of draw attention to that. Also to just update the look as well as visibility of the sign so the sign would move there is a sign obviously there by the entrance it would move a little bit uh, further up and then uh, we would clear out some trees on both sides uh, so that the sign would in fact be uh, visible from from both uh, from both uh, ways um, currently it's not really visible um, uh, if you're coming from um, from out of town um, and so that's kind of the goal as well as uh, putting in um, LED flood lighting so that the sign would be lit from both sides as well. So. well thanks for talking about the flood lighting it says it's in a non illuminated post and panel sign so how is it going to be illuminated? So we will run uh, from the electric that's set up at the driving range we'll run um, uh, wiring up there Brian Free from uh, from from uh, uh, electric would uh, would do that for us um, so we've kind of gotten all that information from him and what's needed to be able to do that but yeah it would be uh, LED flood lighting from from both sides okay so what's it going to look like is, is are the bulbs going to be visible underneath and pointing up to it or yeah from underneath pointing yeah. upwards okay. yes okay any questions Susan? So that, that would sit on the ground is what you're saying? The lighting would? Yes, the lighting would be on the ground. Yes, correct. Okay. And we would have to do some additional landscaping on uh, both of those sides, kind of using that river rock theme that we've been using around the building itself. So you won't see the lights themselves? Co correct. So you're going to yeah, yeah, we would be camouflaging. Doing, correct. We'd be doing some landscaping okay, on, uh, in and around the sign okay. where there's currently none. All right. And is this in our budget? Yes, it is. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the signage I'll as set. submitted. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Please I'll call the roll. Sorry, Mr. Capitol. No, go ahead. Yes. And Mrs. Westfall. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Okay, we had a request from Troy High School baseball boosters to make improvements to Market Street Field. Yes. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, I had uh, got, received a request from Ty Welker, the high school baseball coach. I met with him and Bill Wolke um, uh, with the parents boosters and basically they are just asking at this point permission to be able to enclose the rest of 
the uh, baseball field at North Market. So we already have fencing down both the uh, first base and third base line. There is a gap in both left field and the very end of the fence in right field where people can get in. Um, in the past, we have during Strawberry Festival, even though we put cables up and no parking signs and cones, uh, people have still gotten beyond that and parked on both the softball and baseball fields. Um, that's been an issue in the past. Uh, they also want to eventually be able to purchase uh, more equipment and do improvements inside the dugouts with shelving and bat racks and, and helmet racks and all these types of things that they don't feel like they're able to do uh, right now with the not being able to secure the field and, and you know adding this equipment. So it would benefit not only um, Troy Baseball but any of the other user groups that we have through the summer after their season ends. We have some adult baseball leagues. Uh, we did through recreation, we did a camp last summer. Um, this would just be able to allow us to better secure that field and the equipment that's in that field if we need to. This isn't to say the field will always be locked per se, but uh, if they have um, equipment out such as a pitching machine or uh, batting nets or any type of thing that we need, they've got out on the field that we need to secure during that time, we would, this would give us the ability to do that. Um, the other uh, advantage to being able to secure the field is, is something we just did at uh, Duke Park on our teener field. We had made improvements here at the end of the season uh, with infield seating and some dirt work and edging and so forth. And then an unapproved user group that we're not even sure who it was was coming in in the evenings and utilizing that field. So we were having some of the work that we were doing during the day was being torn up and uh, being played on after hours, uh, unapproved. So we were able to secure that field. This is at Duke Park. By enclosing the Market Street field, this would allow us to be able to do that same, same type of thing if and when the need arose to, to do so that. So it would be at the gate? It would basically just be yeah, extending the outfield fence on around, extending the third baseline fence on down to meet that uh, with the gate there in that corner where we can still get equipment in and out and get the mowers and so forth um, in and out. But... Um, just have the advantage of being able to secure that. So they're asking for permission to be able to do that, and then um, they want to seek out other funding sources, grant money, and whatever fundraising to be able to uh, complete that work if it was approved. What's this about a turtle? Uh, that is a term Ty Welker had used. It's a, uh, you, you may know better, it's a, uh, batting cage. They actually bat into it, I guess, to catch balls, um, and they feel it's expensive enough that they don't want to invest in one. Uh, without being able to properly secure that in the inside the fence once it's set up. So it would be something that during their season or during their practices they would set up. They'd probably leave it set up for the duration of their practice times, uh, maybe even overnight to, into the next day uh, for the next practice, and they want to be able to secure that inside the fence um, if and when they purchase that type of equipment. Okay, when you're talking about secure, how, how, how is the public being kept from inside that field? So the, when I say secure, I actually mean be, to be able to lock the gates that lead into that field. And this is something it's that like would... Like a padlock? Yeah, like a thing. padlock, and that's okay. what we did at Duke Park. And this isn't something that would always be locked, like I said. This would be... Uh, it would just give us that option to lock it if and when that equipment was uh, out on the field or set up. And also during times of special events where we want to block traffic and make sure no vehicles and so forth get out onto the field that shouldn't be there. Yeah, I, I don't have any problem securing it to keep those people that would otherwise vandalize our property from vandalizing sure. it. My problem is keeping the, the dad and his two kids from going onto that field and playing baseball. Yeah, so the other, the other thing we have to realize too with that, like Duke Park for example, any of our, we consider our game fields, and this is our policy at Duke Park, we don't allow practice on those fields during our season. So um, what happens is during the daytime, we prepare those fields for games, and then we can't have people coming in on them to just open play um, or practice. So that's where we encourage like Haywood and Hook and Campbell, um, all those fields that are just open ball fields to promote practice at those fields. So. Um, this would not interfere at all with that type of mentality of letting people come in to play on our fields. Um, we don't allow it anyway, um, especially during the season at least is what I'm saying. 
So, and that, that's where I'm saying beyond their normal season when all that equipment is stored away and put away in the storage, open. it would be open yeah. anyway. Um, this would just give us that additional uh, option to secure the field when we needed to. If we, if we do what they're requesting, we're taking a big departure on what we have done in the past, and that is keep all our fields open to public. And it's the public's taxes that are paying for all this, and they deserve to have access to our park. I, I totally agree with that, except for during the season when the fields have been prepared for games, we don't allow, there's no practice on those fields. There never has it, been. Anyway, right. right. And that, yeah. That's a, that, yeah. right. And that's a, yeah. that's a posted policy. There's signage on the, on the fencing to um, indicate that. Uh, this would give us that option of being able to, once those fields are prepped for, for the game, for game that day. night, we could lock those gates and not allow people on there and allow that equipment to be you know, locked up and, and safe until they get there to play their game. So it's the day after a game. Yeah. The fields aren't going to be locked. Right. If this would not be something that the locks will be put on there and left on there, um, as long as that equipment has been put away and there's no reason and no games scheduled and no uh, uh, prep work has been done to the fields, there would be no reason for us to leave those fields locked. Because otherwise, what it looks like to me is that we're leasing the property to Troy Baseball without any compensation. That would be correct, and that's yeah. not the intention at all. That's not... That would not be my intention. That's definitely not Ty's intention or the parent booster's intention at all when I met with them. Um, and I was very clear about that, that they would not be left locked all the time. It's when, uh, when we, this is something we already do. And like I said, we I just did this at Duke Park on the Teener Field. We've done it on uh, Field 4 on the Legion Field at Duke Park. Uh, when the pitching machines left out there during uh, the fall hitting season, uh, very expensive piece of equipment. So we secure that field when that pieces out there. Um, this is just going to give us more control over the use, proper use of the field and when and who uses it. And that it's a big hassle to lug that step out and lug it, it back. And it is, and there's not really adequate storage at the field, so this, these would be things that would be uh, stored somewhere else, especially for the schools during their season off-site in their storage facilities and then brought in. Um, they could bring it in leave it on site until the end of their season and then it can be removed. So I just say all that to say I fully support the idea. Um, this isn't something that would be taken away from the public's use of the field at all. Uh, it would just give us a more secure and controlled way of allowing use of the field. Okay. Any further discussion on it? I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to go ahead and, uh, and approve that the tri School baseball boosters may make improvements to the Market Street field, as, as you've outlined, and to secure the property after game day preparations until the game is held, and also while their expensive equipment is on the field, hoping that they're not going to be so lazy as to keep it on there forever. And you can put that in minutes if you like. Okay. <laughs> and I'll second that. <laughs> Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Cappers? Yes. Mrs. Emmerich? Yes. Yes, yeah, okay. This is Westfall. Westfall. <laughs> yes. <Motion approved. laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Titterington, do you have anything to come before the commission today? Shannon, anything else? Mom? Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Come on, come on up. You told me you were only going to make a presentation if we asked the questions. That's what you <laughs> called. Um. On, at the previous meeting, you asked about the cost of parks master plan. So we reached out to a few yeah. firms, and one of them uh, gave us a rough estimate, which is 30000 to 50000 Currently, they are reviewing assessment, and then we will have a final price for the park master plan, and we will let you know what the price will be for that. Okay. If you are still interested, too. Thank you very much. Anything else to come before the commission today? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay, motion second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for attending.